One of the things I enjoy cooking the most is Asian cuisine. And on keto, it's pretty darn hard at first. But when you realize, okay, outside of just modifying forms of stir fry, you can get kind of creative. Like sometimes you can, you can even make keto egg rolls and things like that. So I don't want you to get discouraged. And even Walmart has some really good keto friendly Asian food items. So we're gonna go to that department. We're gonna go to that aisle and we're gonna look at some of the ethnic foods that they have and see what's gonna work on keto so that you can start cooking some Asian cuisine at home or just add a little Asian flair or Asian fusion to your food because honestly, it's one of the things I missed the most. I missed chow mein. I missed being able to go have good just cuisine like that, but it's totally doable. Let's head on in. Okay, the first thing, I mean, honestly, you're gonna think this is kind of funny, but we need to grab some ginger, okay? Ginger is one of the best keto foods and fasting foods. Like you could grate this stuff and have it during a fast and put it in your water. Okay, ginger contains six shogunal, but also 10 shogunal. All these different, what are called shogunals, it sounds so funny, have different therapeutic properties and they're heavily, heavily researched. So when you look at the properties of ginger, you see, wait a minute, this doesn't just taste delicious and have a powerful taste but it has some powerful effects within the body. All the way down to inducing autophagy during a fast, all the way down to helping activate AMPK and putting you deeper into a facet or deeper into a ketogenic state. So use the heck out of ginger no matter what, okay? That way you can always, always try to be able to flare up some food a little bit, even if it's not necessarily an Asian dish. So ginger first. And you know, it's kind of funny because you see like some of the cabbages and stuff like that. This is broccoli slaw, I don't see it. Does this have cabbage in it though? Let's see. Yeah, broccoli, carrots. This is actually kind of cool. You could totally use something like this to make like an Asian uh, Chinese chicken salad kind of thing, right? Normally you run into issues with like the soybean oil, but I like this because this is broccoli, carrots, and red cabbage. Cabbage is being a cruciferous vegetable. Very, very good on a ketogenic diet also very good for estrogen modulation. So I know this isn't like the most exciting stuff I'm starting off with, but I'm walking through the produce section and I wanna be making a conscious effort to say, hey, you can still do it even relatively fresh. Now there's other spices. I also would recommend, you know, some Asian cuisine calls for onion, not a whole lot of it. Try going with shallot instead, a lower sugar content. So fun fact, using shallots is going to be more effective. Okay, now we're gonna head on into kind of the uh, Hispanic and Asian aisle, which I think is up here. And we're just gonna take a deep dive. The main thing that we have to be looking out for here, two things, sugar and gluten, okay? A lot of that in many Asian dishes, but you can get around it and I'll show you how. And by the way, comment down below if you'd like to see me do something similar with Mexican food, because I love my Mexican food. So please, please, if you wanna see it, put it down in the comment section below. If you don't wanna see it, put it in the comment section. All right. Okay, you know, one of the things that I do appreciate a lot about a lot of Asian cuisine is it's sodium forward. And we think on keto, like what we think in general, we need to cut the sodium out. One of the things I like most about doing keto is I don't feel bad about having extra sodium when it comes in through, you know, possible Asian cuisine, right? You excrete a lot of minerals, a lot of sodium because of your lower insulin levels during keto. So it's actually a great time to be able to enjoy some of this stuff. So the first thing we have to address, soy sauce, right? Okay, what are some alternatives to soy sauce? Because soy sauce has wheat flour in it, has gluten. We don't want this, right? So if we look at just traditional soy sauce, we see, okay, water, soybeans, which is not exactly great, but it's not the end of the world. We're not using the oil. Wheat, so it's very high in gluten, very high in gluten. And I don't need to beat this into the ground. I've talked about it in other videos, so I'm gonna spare you the gluten details, but I would just advise you as an expert and as someone that's lost 100 pounds with this and has looked at the research for years, I would recommend getting the gluten out of the diet. So then we say, okay, well, what do we have as an alternative? Well, introduce tamari. Okay, tamari is more of a brood type of, um, so it's still gonna have soy, but it doesn't have the wheat in it. So we have water, soybeans, salt, and some alcohol because they sort of brew it in a way rather than kind of uh, how it's, well, it's still brewed. Like soy sauce is still brewed. It's just brewed slightly different where you don't need the wheat. Okay, so tamari gonna have just as much sodium. We'll get one tablespoon, actually it might even be less, one tablespoon, 960, 980, or about the same amount of sodium. Okay, so it really tastes very, very similar. So I would go with tamari. In fact, I'm gonna grab some. But then if you look at here, we actually have a 28% less sodium tamari, and it's also non-GMO, which is great because when you're going for soy, like, tamari has soy in it, 
you do have to be cognizant of the fact that like something like over 90% of the soy is genetically modified and that's where we potentially run into issues. Okay, so this is at least as non-GMO soy. That's a big, big, big deal. So here we have 710 milligrams in one tablespoon. When you're cooking, you're really only using a couple tablespoons, you know, so you're not that bad, but I'm gonna grab this because I absolutely use it. And just so you know, like a lot of the Asian dishes and everything like that, spices, sauces, marinades, everything like that, I would recommend if you uh, don't have a you know store that you can get good stuff or you want to try something new that's keto friendly, I put a link down below for Thrive Market. Talk about them all the time on my channel. They're a big supporter and sponsor of this channel. So they're an online membership based grocery store. But what I like is you can sort by different kinds of food, but you can also sort by diet category. So if you're trying to find like some Asian cuisine type foods or sauces or marinades, you could select keto and find all the things there. But I've listed a few of like my favorites as far as keto is concerned with Thrive Market. Super, super, super economical because it gets delivered to your doorstep. You don't have to go to the grocery store. A lot of times their prices are very competitive. Okay, a lot of times you'll find it even cheaper at Thrive Market than you would at most grocery stores, which is super cool. So that link down below will get you 25% off that Thrive membership and a free gift. So I just highly recommend you try them out. It just makes shopping a whole different experience. It's super cool. But anyhow, we're here at Walmart. So let's keep it on Walmart. Just check them out after this video. And thank you, Thrive. Sriracha, so many people ask about Sriracha go ham on it okay or go rooster on it ha ha dad joke okay relatively low sodium considering there's let's see what's in this one chili a little bit of sugar so people kind of freak out about that but do you see that it's less than a gram of sugar i mean and if you're guzzling this stuff then you deserve an award anyway because that's intense so you're not going to have a whole lot of it but this particular one we might need to watch it a little bit we have garlic acetic acid potassium sorbate uh, potas uh, sorry, sodium bisulfate as preservatives. So let's see if we can find a different brand, okay? I do like that they cont says it contains sulfites. Sulfites can make you feel kind of cruddy, okay? Sometimes it does that. Uh, sometimes it's the sulfur-containing compounds that make us feel almost like hung over from some wine and stuff like that. So let's see, maybe we can find something else. They have a different sriracha. I don't see another brand of sriracha here, but again, a small amount of this would be okay. So let's jump over maybe instead you go with a ground chili paste okay so this is fresh ground chili paste this one's gonna be hard to read the label chili salt acetic acid okay also has sulfites probably because it's from the same brand this one probably the same contains sulfites so does that mean that you avoid it entirely I just think you might find a different chili garlic sauce or a different sriracha because I can promise you they are out there. I just don't see a tremendous selection here. Uh, but one of the things that I do like about Asian cuisine when made the way that you, I don't know, might want to do it in a fat loss oriented way is you can get a lot of really good thermogenic effect from some of the spices that are there. Okay, the capsaicin, all the stuff you get out of chili and cayenne, very, very good. Um, some of the best fat sources okay, are going to be coming from coconut. So when you're doing keto, I recommend that you make some Thai dishes and you use the full fat coconut milk. Use these things, getting those medium chain triglycerides in. Okay, go for that. So that's just kind of a fun fact. You know, a lot of times when you're doing uh, any kind of Asian cuisine, a lot of the oils are gonna be soybean oil at restaurants and things like that. That's just kind of the way it goes with almost any food. It doesn't just, you know, not just Asian, right? But if you make it at home and you can really use the fat from the coconut a lot more and you can cook in that coconut oil, it gives it just a really good kind of taste that you're after. Let's see here. We also have, ooh, bamboo shoots. So this is cool because they look like they're pretty high carb at first. So you say one can though. So a whole can drained, the whole can is only 25 calories. We're talking practically a zero calorie food here. I mean, and what is it? It's mainly fiber. And don't worry about the citric acid in there. So bamboo shoots, if you're looking for a little crunch and you're looking for something different, bamboo shoots are phenomenal for that. And you can mix them up with a little bit of coconut milk, mix them up with some soy sauce. They're actually just a great snack on their own, let alone all the kinds of ways you can cook with them. Then it kind of comes into, what about water chestnuts? One can here is 70 calories, but we do it 17 grams of carbs versus five grams of carbs with two fiber, three net carbs. Here we have 14 net carbs, okay? So there's a sugar content to, to water chestnuts. They taste delicious, but you wanna use them in moderation. So I would recommend going for the bamboo shoots instead of the water chestnuts if you're looking just to kind of add a little bit of a crunch. I love water chestnuts and stir fry, but we also have to factor in that, you know, that could just 
it could kick you out of keto if you have too much of it. So I'm gonna grab these bamboo shoots here. Um, another thing that people talk about, bean sprouts. If you ever wanna make your own kind of dish, you can heat these up, saute them up in some tamari, some teriyaki, anything like that. This particular, mung bean sprouts, water, salt, and citric acid. Look at the nutrition facts of this. It's so straightforward. Mung bean sprouts, water, salt, and citric acid. The whole can is only three grams of carbs. They have some salt to it, but these taste delicious. Again, all this together, everything that's here. Think about how fresh of a dish that could be, and you just add some chicken into it, or you know, add some beef, or whatever you want to do, and make it just liven it up a little bit. So let's kind of move along a little bit. When you get into a lot of these sauces, you're gonna find preservatives, you're gonna find all kinds of things. So just be aware of that. I could almost tell you with this brand, we're gonna see a, yeah, wheat, we're gonna see sugar, let's not even bother with it. Uh, the bottom line is you need to be watching out for the wheat, you need to be watching out for the soybean oil, you need to be watching out for the sodium benzoate, okay? The potassium sorbate, things like that, try to keep to a minimum, okay? Well, obviously the sugar, so I don't need to beat that into the ground too much. Now, nori, again, crumble it up, get the shreds of it, get smaller pieces of it. It's one of the best foods you could possibly have in general super high in iodine. It is tremendous for your thyroid. It is tremendous for supporting actual function of the thyroid, but also very, very good overall, just metabolically speaking, okay? So not only is it rich in iodine, but you're also going to get all kinds of different benefits from what are called beta-glucans. So you see that one gram of fiber there? Well, that one gram of fiber happens to be what is called a beta-glucan. Beta-glucans are a very specific kind of fiber in a way where they are glu a bunch of glu thousands of glucose molecules bound together, or it might be hundreds, I forgot how many, but a bunch of glucose molecules tightly bound together that our body does not have the ability to break down. So, no, it's okay. So what happens? The body doesn't break it down, so it stays intact. Well, glucose can feed our gut cells. It can feed, or not our cells, but our, our microbiome. Since it doesn't digest, it stays there and it feeds the microbiome. So beta-glucans that are in mushrooms, are in seaweed, are in some kelp, one of the best ultimate superfoods overall, let alone just in Asian cuisine. Um, and let's kind of jump around here really quick. I, I get really excited here because there's so much cool stuff. Sushi Ginger, I love this company. This one has sugar. They're actually local to me, so I just want to give them a big shout out. I love those guys. Uh, black sesame and sesame seed. Is there a benefit to black sesame over regular sesame? Uh, only when you get down to having a high concentration of it, of like black sesame oil. Uh, but sesame seeds are one of the best forms of omega-6 that you can have. Omega-6, you might be thinking, Thomas always says omega-6s are bad, and most of them, we shouldn't have an abundance of them, but they still regulate prostaglandins, right? Prostaglandin E2, we still need this balance of prostaglandin 1 and 3 and 2, and omega-3s and omega-6s are constantly in that battle, but sesame seeds contain naturally containing, naturally contain, excuse me, antioxidants that actually allow these polyunsaturated fats to be more stable, so load up on this. In fact, I want to see if I can find some sesame oil Mm, I don't see it, it might be in, the, it might be in a different section. Uh, it might be in the actual cooking section itself, but that's okay. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna grab both of these. Here's some smaller forms of seaweed snack too. The, thing, the reason I like the nori though, is there's just nothing to it. It's just straight up seaweed. Um, we're getting into the Thai section here, which I could kind of get into a little bit. But if you look at like the green curry paste, this company is great, Thai Kitchen. Green chili pepper, look at the ingredients here. Green chili pepper garlic, lemongrass, spices, salt, shallot, and lime peel. How is that not, like, you take chicken, okay, or you, you take some garlic, you take a little bit of shallot, you put it in some sesame oil in a wok, or just, and you heat that up, and you get it nice and toasted, then you add a tablespoon of this into it, mix it up a little bit, then you add a little bit of coconut milk from those cans that we talked about, you have a curry sauce. It is not that complex and you have a keto-friendly curry sauce. And then you cook up your chicken and your sesame oil in another pan, along with a little bit of tamari, boom, right? There you go, you see? I can do it, I can do it, people. But, and I have done that, and it's one of my wife's favorite dishes. But interestingly enough, with the coconut milk, if you cook it too much, it sometimes separates, and it gets kind of gnarly. So just fun fact. If you want me to do, also put down in the comment section, Thomas, we wanna see you do some Asian cuisine cooking. You wanna see it? I gotta hear from you, I can't just do it. It costs too much money and time to make these videos without knowing you're gonna watch it. Okay, moving on. Sorry, I get super pumped on that. Cognac noodles, this is cool. Oh, I'm so hungry now. 
Don't film these videos, Thomas, when you're hungry. You just want to buy everything. Cognac root is very cool, and I love that they're putting it in Asian section. Because before it was like, oh, it's a weird root that nobody's going to eat. So cognac root is also known as a shirataki noodle. What it is, is one thing. Well, in this case, three. Water, cognac flour, and citric acid. Cognac root is what is called a glucomannan fiber. And it holds, so it doesn't say exactly how much it holds, but I know from the research that one gram of glucomannan fiber holds like 10 to 15 grams of water. Heavily soluble, draws a lot of water in, and you get a lot of volume to it. This doesn't, we can't really see through it. It's not transparent. But basically, it has the consistency of a noodle. Kind of tastes like a, uh, kind of tastes like a rice noodle that is a little extra slimy. I shouldn't use the word slimy. It looks at all like loosey-goosey, wiggly-giggly, something like that. I don't know. I, I want to use some more culinary term because wiggly-giggly is completely, like, Emeril uses that all the time. Totally. Anyway, that's kind of what they look like. Um, in, in Asian cuisine, it works a lot better. They're showing it with marinara. I do like cognac root. What's the difference here? Uh, one spaghetti. Oh, they have, they have rice? That's kind of cool. I don't know if it's going to have the same effect. I'm just going to get the noodles. Wow. They actually have a really good selection of stuff here. And one of the things I really like about Asian cuisine is how much fish it contains. Like, if you're really doing it right, lots of fish, and eating the components, like eating the skin, eating some of the bone, eating some of the stuff that actually really gives you the vitamin D. So I think that Asian cuisine is so rich in good quality vitamin D, especially in the coastal regions. That's, I mean, honestly, you look at like the Okinawans, you look at everything like that, like some that even eat higher carbohydrate diets, and they're consuming so much in the way of omega-3, so much in the way of seafood. It's, I think it's great. I really think it is great. Leading me to, oh, here's the sesame oil. With sesame oil, if you can find toasted, it's always better, because toasted, toasting it activates another uh, antioxidant. I don't know if they have toasted here. Let's just make sure this is good to go. One ingredient, sesame seed oil. I'm cool with that. We cook with it a lot. Again, it's an omega-6, right? It's kind of crazy. But because of the antioxidant, it is exempt. It is a very interesting exception. Rice vinegar, you can get seasoned, but usually the seasoned has invert sugar and brown sugar in it. So be careful with that. Whereas regular rice vinegar is just rice vinegar. And it's a real, relatively low acid compared to a lot of other ones. So although a lot of what we're after with vinegar is the acetic acid content, with rice vinegar, you're going more for a flavor. Now, vinegar in general will slow down the absorption and the utilization, I shouldn't say the utilization, but it slows down the absorption of glucose and it can modulate blood glucose just like apple cider vinegar can. So cooking with lots of vinegar, use vinegar to cook your chicken and just keep it wet. Just constantly be putting the vinegar on it, okay? And the moment that it's not wet anymore, the chicken can burn. But you could use this with a little bit of tamari and maybe a smidget of coconut oil, you'd be good. Okay, oh, boom, boom. I don't know what that means, it just looked cool. Boom, boom. First ingredient, canola oil. So this is the kind of stuff you gotta be careful of. Canola oil, high fructose corn syrup, cane sugar. I mean, this is boom, boom, bad, bad, okay? But what I wanted to point out is mainly the canola oil stuff you're gonna see with a lot of these. So what I would do, like even sriracha mayo, they're taking sriracha sauce and they're using mayonnaise, soybean oil, okay? Make your own. Get some like Primal Kitchen brand, good quality avocado oil mayonnaise. Get some sriracha or some chili sauce and make your own. It's really easy. You don't need to be doing anything crazy. Uh, a lot of these sweet sauces are not gonna be good to go. Let's take a look at this. What's this Pad Thai sauce? Actually, I've never seen this one. Ooh, this one's got a lot of sugar. Sugar, water, rice vinegar. Yeah, we're gonna pass on that. Um, you can make a similar thing though. Once, if you do have fish sauce, um, usually fish sauce is going to have, ooh, this one doesn't have, yeah, so this one's anchovy, sea salt, water, and sugar. It does have a little bit of sugar, but one tablespoon is only less than one gram of sugar. I don't think you're going to uh, use a ton of it, especially in cooking. So it's for that savory flavor that you would normally get. So you can use it in place of salt a lot of times. It gives you a little bit of a fishier taste. Uh, my wife loves dishes that have fish sauce in it until she realizes they have fish sauce in it. She doesn't like fish or seafood. So I can make something totally mess with her head. Um, so I can't bring this into the house. My wife will kill me, but <laughs> I also have found some alternatives. I don't really remember the brand name, but if you go to Whole Foods, there's actually vegan fish sauce alternatives, which use seaweed and algae to sort of get the similar flavor without the fish, which I think is weirder and kind of creepier, but it gets past my wife's aversion to fish. <laughs> uh, let me see here. Ooh, I do love peanut sauce. Fun fact, I have a histamine response to peanuts, okay? 
I have peanuts, I start sneezing. I don't go into anaphylaxis, but I have a mild peanut allergy to the point where it makes me not feel really good. Like I sneeze a lot, I get sniffly, my eyes get swollen. My wife will still find me hiding in the kitchen, occasionally having some peanut butter. And she's like, you know, this messes you up. And I like, I know. <laughs> like I, I, a peanut butter isn't even that good for you at all. It's really not good for you when you're allergic to it. But even I, <laughs> so anyway, I love peanut sauce. Uh, this one though has a big glaring thing we need to look out for. Water, peanut butter. And in this case, they're using peanut butter that has hydrogenated vegetable oil. They're using cottonseed and soybean and rapeseed oil, and then they're hydrogenating it. So it's a plus that this one I believe is gluten-free. Yeah, they're using tamari. It's gluten-free, but we run into the big problem that hydrogenated fats, that is one of the worst ways that that you can gain a bunch of visceral fat. If you're concerned with like a pot belly, things like that, clear evidence that hydrogenated fats contribute to visceral fat, which is what's protruding, not giving you like the typical kind of jiggly fat you would think about, but the protruding fat. So let's see if we can find a different one because the Sky Valley uh, is a really cool company, but I think this one, if I recall, yeah, this one's got too many carbs, but it's, a, it's better. It's still cane sugar, peanuts, tamari soy sauce, soybeans, for flavor, not using the oil. And then they're using sesame oil as the oil, along with some sunflower oil, which is not great, but it's better than partially hydrogenated oil. Let's put it that way. Um, I don't see any... I bet you if we went to a different section of the store, which I'm not gonna worry about right now, we could find some of the Primal Kitchen brand teriyaki. Um, fun fact, again, using the link down below, Thrive Market, you can absolutely get like Primal Kitchen brand. They have a gluten-free and keto-friendly teriyaki and all kinds of stuff. So I would recommend you check that out because usually with a lot of like hoisin and teriyaki, you can guess that we're gonna have quite a bit of sugar. First ingredient, hoisin sauce, which is sugar, water, soybeans, modified cornstarch and wheat flour. Okay, pretty much everything that I would advise staying away from. Okay, then let's, let's end on something here. Let's talk about this soup for a second. It's all gonna depend. A lot of these different ones, like let's see, this one looks like a clean one just by the label, I don't know. So it's gluten-free, low sodium, no MSG, which is always a plus. I feel like things have gotten better. It used to, you used to see a lot of MSG in a lot of Asian food. Um, and I don't know, really know why. A lot of times MSG is used just as a flavor enhancer. It brings out flavor. It's not always a, considered a bad thing. In fact, I think in a lot of cuisines, they see the benefit of it. But you see it in a lot of, let's to give you context, like American barbecue, they'll load up with MSG because they'll try to enhance the flavor when it's really not that good. Uh, so, but it can also be used in a nice way. Well, this is interesting. Okay, okay, cool thing. Cornstarch, garlic, powder, spices. So you might be thinking, oh, it's got cornstarch in it. I just don't think you're gonna have a huge deal. This is for one fourth of this packet, you're gonna have five grams of carbs. You make this soup for four servings, you're gonna have five grams of carbs. I think you'll be okay. Just maybe if you really wanna have it, you know, so this is pretty cool. Simple, not a lot of salt. Let's compare that to like the Kiko Man brand. Kiko Man, Kiko Man. Kiko Man while he's down. <laughs> Potato starch, salt, glucose, sugar. I mean, you can already see. Dehydrated soy sauce, soy salt, salt, soybeans, wheat, maltodextrin, monosodium glutamate. I mean, $1.44 for this. $1.64 for this. Cheaper. And this one gives us two and a half servings. This one gives us four. Actually, I'm going to try that one. I'm not the biggest fan of corn, you know, but it's all good, right? You could do a similar thing if you knew the spices and just do it with like arrowroot flour. Uh, it's going to get you a similar thing. Look at these miso broth here. This is organic, which is a plus. Filtered water, organic white miso, which is or, uh, organic soybeans, organic rice, salt, yeast, cozy culture, organic bean flour, organic natural flavor, combo. It's got kelp. You know, again, it's got some soybeans in there, but it's organic, we're not getting the GMO, we're not extracting the oil, and we're especially not hydrogenating it. Six grams of carbohydrates for one fourth of this, most of it coming from the organic bean flour, because look, six grams of carbs, but two grams of which is fiber. So really cool, and it's all organic. Great source of vitamin D and iodine, which we are all about. So what's the difference here? Oh wait, one's pho, one's ramen. I'm gonna try this miso one. What about ramen broth? Is this is bean flour. Yeah, water, bean flour, tamari, or it's got a little bit of alcohol in it. Sesame oil, garlic puree, soy milk powder. Uh, dang it. Vegan pork flavor, that's a little weird. Let me see. What about the pho? I love pho. Organic vegetable stock, 
in a vegetable stock, carrot, onion, yeast extract. Yeast extract sometimes is similar to MSG. Sometimes it's used in, in a better fashion. Beef flavor, mushroom powder. I'm gonna try this one. 350 for that, and that's four servings. So I'm gonna call it a day. I think I found some pretty good stuff, and I think you got a good little taste of the Asian things that you can get that are still gonna be totally keto friendly. You know, if I went to like an Asian market, I could probably find a lot more different things. Uh, but you know, this is what we get at Walmart. And sometimes you just gotta live with what you got. One of my favorite things, okay, just remember, just, this is just a fun thing that you can use in your Asian wraps. My favorite thing is what I call the abandonment. It's where people, like, you always find what people swapped things out for, right? And here, I just, I saw these tortillas, and then I'm like, someone ditched their coconut wraps. Because <laughs> they're like, I wanna be healthy. Uh, I'm gonna go for tortillas instead. So this is kind of funny. Uh, actually, what is this? You know what, actually, well, it looks like they're still kind of here. Interesting. So here's the coconut wraps, turmeric. There's just like no real label for them. So these are really cool though. And you, I would, in this case, I would do it for the turmeric ones. So in this case, four grams of net carbs per wrap. Coconut meat, coconut water, coconut oil, turmeric powder, and that's it. And this, you absolutely, even all the way down to the turmeric, you could make like an Indian wrap. You could make some kind of Thai wrap. You could make a regular spring roll and you could use the cabbage and you could use the broccoli slaw and all of that and just make it your own little fresh wrap. In fact, I might want to do that. I might do that and film it. Who knows? Maybe you'll get lucky. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel and I'll see you tomorrow.